The Tour de France, you may or may not have heard of it. Greatest race on earth? We definitely think so. This year, you'll be able to catch all the action on GCN Plus, live, on demand, pre and post race shows, you name it. The Tour is coming, it's going to be great. And if you're not sure on how the Tour actually works, or maybe you want a greater understanding of some of its more complicated details, perhaps even you've stumbled across this video and you literally have no idea what the Tour is, you're at the right place because we're going to explain exactly what the tour is on five different levels, starting from the simplest to the most complex in-depth description. Let's get you up to speed. The Tour de France is the world's biggest and most famous bike race. The race takes place in France every July, with the men racing over 21 stages and the women eight stages. The route of the race is different every year, but it's usually around three and a half thousand kilometers long over those 21 days for the men, and at the moment around a thousand kilometers for the women. It's the most prestigious race in cycling. Think what Wimbledon is for tennis, the Super Bowl, or the World Cup final in soccer. The leader of the race wears this yellow jersey, and the winner, at the end of it all, well, they get to keep it. Another point though, if you don't fancy uh, taking the race on yourself, you can head over to the GCN shop and get some of our t-shirts and hoodies with Tour de France colouring on them, and you'll do great. Either way, let's move on to level two. The men's race is three weeks long with 21 stages over consecutive days, but there are two rest days in which racing doesn't take place to act as a pause between each week block. This year, 2022, will be its 109th edition. On average, the race will cover around 100 miles every day with an average speed of about 40 kilometers an hour, 25 miles per hour. There are 198 riders in the race split into 22 teams. Each team is made up of eight riders. The women's Tour de France Femmes is 1,029 kilometers long over eight days. 2022 marks the first edition of the women's race in its current format, billed as the biggest race on the female calendar. Six riders on each squad and 144 riders in total. The leader of the Tour de France is the one with the lowest cumulative time over each of the stages and wears the yellow jersey. For example, on the first stage, you race from start to finish and the clock stops when the first rider crosses the line and wins the day at the end of that stage. Everyone starts together again on stage two, but if the rider who won stage one was one minute ahead of the other riders, they'll now be one minute ahead on overall time and be in the lead, swapping their usual team jersey for the yellow jersey. So everyone knows they are the leader or in yellow. Overall time is added up throughout the Tour de France. This is called the general classification. As I said, the leader of this general classification wears the yellow jersey. The person who leads the general classification, or GC, wearing yellow after the final stage wins the Tour de France. On to level three. The Tour de France. We've established it's the biggest race in the world and it takes place in France, but this year the men start in Denmark on the 1st of July. I know, right, it's slightly confusing, but let's explain. The thing is, the route of the Tour de France changes every year. Each of those stages will be different and the organizers of the race decide where each stage will go. There are famous climbs such as Alpe d'Huez, Col de Galibier, and Tourmalet in the Alps and Pyrenees, which usually the race is kind of decided on and is included over different editions. So historically, many of the tour's famous duels have taken place on those iconic roads. Those climbs often cross the Pyrenees and Alps into Spain, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, for example, which is why sometimes the route does head out of France too. Back to Denmark though, which is admittedly a long way from the Alps. The start of the whole Tour de France, called the Grand Depart, is probably the most lucrative for a potential town to host, which is why you see the tour starting from places like London, Dusseldorf, Brussels and Utrecht. The original budget for the Danish Grand Depart was around 12 million US dollars, which is big money, isn't it? But you can see why that's worth it to a local area. Get it right and the boost in tourism and the local economy is massive. It's kind of like hosting an Olympics or a World Cup. The men's race finishes in Paris on the 24th of July down the Champs Elysees. The women start on that same day by the Eiffel Tower, finishing eight days later up Le Superplanche de Belfi, a seven kilometer climb in eastern France. That final day arguably will prove to be the most decisive of the race for the women. The yellow jersey isn't the only thing you can win at the Tour. Whilst winning the race overall is the most coveted, 
there are plenty more opportunities for riders to be in the spotlight. You can win the red polka dot jersey, green sprints jersey and white young riders jersey. Plus, winning an individual stage of the Tour de France is a huge deal. Mark Cavendish, a now household name, has won 34 stages but never come anywhere close to the overall classification win. Red polka dot, that's the best climber. There are finish lines atop each mountain of the Tour and you pick up points across these depending on where you finish. Person with the most points wins the jersey by the end. Green, same story, but there are flat finish lines across each stage. Normally in towns, you pick up points here as well as at the end of each stage. White jersey, same story as yellow, but this can be won by anyone under 26 years of age. On to level four. Tactics play a huge role in deciding the tour, not just in the overall classification, but in everything else too. As we said before, each team has a limited number of riders. So just picking who they're gonna take is a tough task and selection will start almost a year in advance really. Most squads have a large roster to pick from with the riders who will make up the tour squad usually the highest paid of the team, so a large portion of the budget in terms of salary anyway. And that will be set aside to make sure they have a good squad to target the race. Each team will go into the tour with their own goals, placing a rider in the top 10, podium or winning the overall is massive. Doing so usually requires a whole squad built around one single rider. What do we mean by help? Quite a lot actually. If you're a pro rider and assigned to support a leader at the Tour de France, you could be doing anything from carrying bottles and food to keeping your leader well fed, sitting on the front of the bunch in the wind so that your leader can avoid potential crashes in the bunch, chasing down dangerous moves which may put your leader out of contention to overwind two, or setting tempo on long climbs to fatigue the rest of the competition and set your leader up for the win. Giving a wheel also a crucial moment if their leader gets a puncture, so each team is looking to have a good balance of helpers that can support a rider's bid for overall glory. They need to make sure they have strong riders on the flat, climbers to support in the mountains, and a few who can do a little bit of everything and always be counted upon. Resilience over multiple days is a valued attribute. Other teams may not even target the yellow jersey at all. For some, the sprint stages are the main goal. They'll bring a whole team of strong, fast riders who can support one sprinter and deliver them to the line in the best possible shape on towards flatter stages. This is why on those flat days, you often see one team riding on the front of the bunch. That team has brought a whole load of riders literally to do just that ride on the front and control the race so that by the finish on a flat stage, the day will be decided by a sprint. Their team sprinter can then lunge the line and win that stage. All teams at the Tour are funded by brands sponsoring their squad. That's how the professional cycling model works. The Tour de France is one of the main events of the year where a brand can get exposure. All those wins Mark Cavendish got all the times he was on the front page of the newspaper, TV, news sites, internet, any short of media showing him win, every time the sponsor of his team was splashed right across his chest, he was winning. Another reason why you see riders zipping up their jersey before they celebrate and why so often you see riders celebrate with both hands in the air, maximum exposure. Back to the point of sprint stages though, and this is why some teams purely target the sprint stages. They feel like this is their best chance to maximize exposure for their sponsors. If they can win one, two, three, or more stages every time at the Tour is a massive win for their sponsors and it keeps the team on the road for another year or even two. Speaking of which, each team at the Tour is not only made of riders, there is a huge background staff involved. In the men's race, for example, Team Sky, now known as Ineos Grenadiers, spoke about how many staff they brought to the race at the 2016 edition. Get this, they had 34 team members ranging from massage therapists, team doctors to team managers and chefs. They also needed 55 bikes and over 80 spare wheels, 82 spare cadets and 57 spare chains. The organisation behind each squad and the race is massive. It's estimated that the tour needs around 4,500 hotel rooms per night too. So you can see why this is such a big organisational challenge. On to level five. The first edition of the men's tour took place in 1903. It was only six stages long back then, but still 2,248 kilometers long. It ran as a way of boosting sales for a newspaper called Le Auto. 
Four riders in the history of the men's Tour de France have won the race a total of five times. Bernard Hino, Eddie Merckx, Jacques Onquetil, and Mikel Indurain. Legends of the sport. British rider Chris Froome is nearly on that list with four overall wins. French rider Sylvain Chavanel has started the race 18 times, the most by any rider, and he made it to the finish 16 of those editions too. The smallest overall winning margin, eight seconds in 1989 by Greg LeMond over Laurent Fignon. Largest overall win margin, that was the first edition when Morris Gallien won by two hours, 59 minutes and 21 seconds. France's capital, Paris, has featured in every single edition at some point, the most visited city in tour history. Col de Galibier is the most featured climb. It's been part of 37 stages. France also has the most overall wins by any nation with 36, although their last win was back in 1985. The women's Tour de France, unfortunately, doesn't have a similar history to the men's, although now, with this year's first edition of the Tour de France Femmes, it will change. Many speak about the race being held for the first time back in 1984, but actually, the first ever women's tour was held in 1955 and was won by British rider Millie Robinson. Another race wasn't organized until 1984, and that ran until 1989. It consisted of 18 stages to begin with, dropping to 11 by 1989. American Marion Martin won in 89, Italian Maria Canins 85 and 86, and Johnny Longo, 87 to 89. There wouldn't be another multi-day race, however, with the Tour de France name until today. La Course by La Tour ran from 2014 as a one-day race, which Marion Voss and Annemiek van Vluten have both won twice, the most of any rider. Demi Vollering, Lizzie Diagnum, Chloe Hoskin, and Anna van der Breggen being the other winners. On to some of the more obscure Tour de France rules now. On road stages, a gap of one second is needed between riders to signify a countable time gap, which will count in the GC. But on sprint stages, that gap needs to be at least three seconds between riders at the finish to count. An incident, crash or puncture in the last kilometre of racing will see a rider finish with the same time as the other riders they were with when that incident happened, so long as they can get up and finish the stage. However, in this year's 2022 edition, that rule doesn't apply on TT and mountain finish. So that's stages 1, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 17, 18 and 20. There are also time bonuses at the finish except time trial stages. This year there are 10, 6 and 4 seconds available to the winner, second and third place on each stage respectively. As well as all the jerseys available to win, there is also a most combative rider award on each stage given to the rider who attacks the most. Win this and you get to wear a red number on the following stage. So there you have it, five explanations of the Tour de France. And if you want us to dive back into all the details and maybe come back with another video, because there are so many nuances of this race, so many different little explanations that you can dive into, please let us know and we'll do another one. And if you're looking to understand a bit more about the pro cycling calendar, because the Tour de France is not the only race of the year, there's so many other races to, to build up to the Tour and that stand in their own right, do check out our fans guide to pro cycling. It's a great way to understand a bit more about our sport. Some brilliant information there, over 240 pages. You can find that available to buy on the GCN shop. And don't forget to catch all the action on GCN Plus of this year's Tour de France. It's gonna be a cracker. Either way, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck to all the men and women vying for the yellow jersey this year. Viva la Tour.